Hello, I'm Hannah. Welcome to this on-demand training session on VAT for VAT registered councils. That is that you have a VAT number and you charge VAT on your sales. Before we get started, I just want to give you a quick overview of the ways that you can get in touch if you need any help. I'm part of the support team, Jane, Tracy, Jess and Joe. Help and support is included free with Scribes. If you get stuck, have any questions or need any help, do please get in touch. You can do so by going to scribeaccounts.com where you can find a wealth of help guides and you can also sign up for live training sessions. You can email us at hello at scribeaccounts.com. You can join the Facebook group Scribe Family. We're on there, but so are other users of Scribe. You can give us a call between 9.30 and 5 Monday to Friday. And you can also go to Scribe Bite Size on YouTube, which has five minute snippet videos of parts of the training sessions and the sections that we cover. We can now get started and looking at VAT using my fictitious Scribe Paris Council for the purposes of this training. Many options are all down the left hand side. You can see that here. But before we start, I want to go into the setup menu and look at the VAT types that are available. You do not need to set any VAT types up or make any amendments in here. They're all available for you in the system. So when you start entering transactions in, you'll be able to select them from the drop down. But just to cover again what they relate to, we'll go through each in turn. Firstly, we think about standards. So that's our standard rate VAT registered suppliers showing their VAT number on the invoice and the rate or amount of VAT they are charging. So that would be standard for 20%. Similar scenario for lower, which is 5% VAT for things such as utilities. We then have zero and exempt. So no VAT charged, but for things specifically categorised as such, such as postage or books. X outside scope. So there's anything outside the scope of VAT. So that's salaries, the preset, any supplier who is not VAT registered because they're not over the VAT threshold. And if you receive any invoices that don't charge VAT and you're not entirely sure what the correct VAT type is, then use X outside scope if in any doubt. We also have reverse charge here, which is relevant if you are VAT registered and you receive an invoice from a supplier stating that invoice is subject to the reverse charge. It's likely to be a software company outside the UK and you need to enter using this VAT type in order that the VAT return updates with this information correctly. There is a separate help guide on this and do get in touch if you get stuck. It doesn't happen very often, but it's quite straightforward if it does crop up. And then finally, we have our refund here, and that is specifically for VAT relating to HMRC, either that you've reclaimed as part of the return that you've completed, or if you have to pay VAT over to HMRC, you must use this VAT type in your payment or your receipt transaction to or from HMRC. It is not for general refunds of, the, of refunds from suppliers. I'll cover that in more detail as we go through the rest of the session. Moving down from the setup menu, then we can look at under account the council profile and just confirm that you've entered all the details for being VAT registered under the VAT section. Obviously you need to tick the box here and if you have a VAT number you will need obviously enter that in along with the VAT registration date and VAT first return end date. This is the information that Scribe requires in order to sign in correctly with your government gateway ID through to HMRC to bring back your VAT information into the, your Scribe account. So put as much information as you, as you have in there. Once you've added in the information, make sure you click save. And then we can look at the VAT menu here. By ticking the box of VAT registered, you will see the relevant menu options here. We have VAT summary, VAT list, VAT 100 ports and the option to sign in with making tax digital. We look at the VAT summary first and then thinking about signing up directly with the MTD in a moment. So the VAT summary then will, is the report that calculates the VAT position on Scribe. You can run it at the date you require, but we will just run it as at today's date. So this is information that it uses in order to calculate your end of year VAT position. This is particularly important if you work in income expenditure at the year end, as Scribe will use this carried forward figure at the bottom as part of an adjusting item between boxes seven and eight. So it must be correct and equal to the amount of VAT that you are due to claim at the end of the year. 
Therefore, it's important to check this in here. The brought forward figure is the amount of that that you were due to claim or had claimed but not received or were due to pay at, as at the end of last year. So 31st of March position brought forward to the 1st of April. If you had scribed last year, then that should have automatically copied over as part of your processes when you ticked all the boxes to copy everything over. And if you are new to scribe this year, then you will need to have entered it in as part of your opening balances and part of the setup. If it's not appearing and scribe is you're new to scribe this year, you need to go to the setup menu, go to bank balances, and then against that, click into it where it's blue here and enter in the figure. A minus figure denotes that it was owed back to you. So if we see if you owed back to HMRC at the end of last year, don't enter a minus sign there. And if you were in a scenario where you had scribe last year and you're not seeing a figure pulling through, Again, under the setup menu, you've got the option to bring forward balances. Click that and copy and it will pull it through. We return now to our VAT summary once again. You now see we have a receipts figure that's the same. So the amount of VAT that I was due to claim at the end of last year, I've subsequently received and my receipt is populating in here. We'll take a look at that receipt so we can see how we've entered it in. So my search is remembered HMRC in here, but if not, just to show you, you can type anything you want in here to help you find it. So if it is HMRC, you've got it there. If you want to view it, you can just click the blue voucher number there. So this is all the details that I entered when I entered the receipt that, that I had back to so HMRC. I've just put it to a sundry income code. You may have a VAT specific VAT reclaim code, which is fine, but you must ensure that you've used this R refund that type when you've had that back in, as it shows no net field here, and all of that is appearing in the VAT field itself. So this is how Scribe then uses that information to populate the VAT summary to calculate it as it goes through. If you are VAT registered, you're likely to be claiming VAT on income. That's absolutely fine, and you would just enter it in the normal way using your S standard type because you're charging 20% VAT. So again, if we return to our VAT summary, mine's a very simple example, as you can see those match. Obviously, if you're VAT registered and you're, and you're charging VAT on receipts, then this figure will be far higher than this opening balance because not only are you likely to receive this, you'll also have that building up from the fact that you've charged it out to your customers, which is absolutely fine. It's the uh, ultimate balance at the bottom that you need to ensure is correct. Then you'll see your payments. So this is all the payments that you've entered on Describe that have a VAT element and the total of that VAT element is shown here. This then results in this carried forward position. So as at today, I would it'd be necessary for me to claim back £935.30. That would be the amount on the return in this scenario, although I haven't actually got any VAT on my income. And if I was that registered, this is the amount that I would want back from HMRC to make sure everything balances. So it's a good idea to make sure that the points at which your quarters end, that this is correct. So the balance, as at say for the 31st of December, if that's your quarter end, matches when you run this report to that date as well to make sure that everything is in line. You can also use the back list to check what's going through. Now this is selected in quarter ranges. So this is the standard quarter starting from the 1st of April. So if they follow through on that basis, you can use them. If not, you can enter a custom date range. Sometimes you may be doing your returns on a monthly basis or your quarters may not fall in the correct time periods, but you can also run it for the financial year itself as well. So this is quite useful in support of everything that's gone through. It's a comprehensive list of all the entries and that type. So you may want to use this information just to purely check that what you put through against your, your suppliers, for example, is the correct VAT type. There is an option to produce the VAT 100, which is the VAT return itself. But of course, now that making tax digital is mandatory, you will need to be submitting via this. So be aware that you have the option to run this report to view the information, okay? But that you will also get this option appearing when you've signed through for making tax digital. Again, you've got the quarter dates that you can enter in custom date ranges if your quarters. And once you've got this information, you can use the VAT list to produce a report that breaks down that quarter if you need more information. So in terms of signing in to Scribe for making tax digital with HMRC, you would click here. 
is ask firstly for the back number. Now, clearly I can't show you signing in because my fictitious scribe parish council does not have a VAT number, but it's fairly self-explanatory if you follow through the process. So once you put your VAT number in, it will start to take you through the information to sign in. Make sure before you do this process that you have signed up for making tax digital with HMRC via your government direct via government gateway ID login. If you have just recently done so, it will take a couple, two or three days for it to update there and before you're able to log in. So if you have any problems coming through on the scribe side, it may be that it just needs a bit longer to update there end. Okay. Within the Scribe website itself, so if you click help or go to scribeaccounts.com, where you can get a wealth of support, as I mentioned at the start, under the support option, you do have these account help guides in here, and you can get some more information on that, particularly making tax digital. If I start typing in making, you can see we've got two um, help guides here. The bottom one is the initial connecting to HMRC, so this is particularly useful because we can't demonstrate this connection in a um, training session because obviously our fictitious accounts are not that registered. So you can see, start to see the pages that you're going to get as you would move through in here. And then once you get to the point of it starting to link up, it will ask you to link and sign in with your government gateway. Now, providing that's recognised, it will work and then you'll see your VAT obligations. The menu options will change. I go back to scribe under that this making tax digital initial menu option will disappear and be replaced by VAT obligations and VAT liabilities um, within here and with HMRC payments and then it will return the information that is held in your VAT account with HMRC through scribe so you will be able to see the dates of the returns and the dates that you need to submit them by and their status. So once you've submitted one, obviously it'll update and show you the next available one. You'll be able to do all of that via Scribe. So I can't show you that directly, but hopefully it's fairly self-explanatory once you've signed in. Once you see that return appearing, you'll be able to view the figures that it wants to submit, which will be in line with the information that you can run on these separate reports. And when you're happy, it will submit. When you submit your return via Scribe, it will lock down all the transactions in the period of the return that you have submitted. So be aware of this. We'd always recommend that you complete your bank reconciliations for the period that you're claiming for, because this will likely flag up any issues. You do not want to run your VAT return, then go to bank rec and realise you've got payments missing that will therefore miss that VAT return. So make sure all your data is on, your bank reconciliations are complete before you then submit your return. I hope you found all that useful. As we said at the start, if there are any problems you come into this, you're not sure about something, do please contact us and we will help you out. Thank you very much.